Welcome to this advanced shell scripting video titled Wiki Autoload, a shell script to automatically upload content to a MediaWiki server. This is a corn shell or bash shell script to automatically upload content to a wiki server that is running the Wikimedia software. And the purpose of this video is to provide the shell programmer or system programmer with an automated mechanism for uploading documentation and content to a wiki server. The shell script can be run from any system in any organization to automatically upload information to their centralized wiki documentation server. So required for this is either cornshell93 from cornshell.com or bash and it also requires the wget program for AIX and if you want to download Cornshell 93 and place it on your system. Uh, you should probably put that uh, under user bin kshell93. So before I continue describing uh, this shell script, this uh, wiki autoload shell script, I'll first tell you where you can get it. So if you open a browser, and go to mountzia.com, that's mtxia.com, and then click on download and go to scripts. You'll see a directory out there called corn. Click on corn, and under that you'll see a directory called wiki, w-i-k-i. Click on that. And if you scroll down on that page, you will see the wiki autoload shell script. And under that, you can click on this download link. You can click on this link, and it'll take you to an HTML version of the shell script. You can click on this link that says download, and it'll take you to a clean text version of the shell script. So that's where the shell script is. Go to mountzia.com, downloads scripts, corn, wiki, and scroll down on that page till you see wiki auto load and click on download and that will take you to a clean text version of the shell script. Now before attempting to run the wiki auto load shell script, it is recommended that you download the latest version of cornshell 93 from cornshell.com. And so if you just go to cornshell.com, uh, there are links there that will allow you to download the latest version of Cornshell 93. Once you download that, then you will want to copy that, uh, uncompress it, and copy it to user bin. And you can see under user bin, I have a link to, or I have a file called user bin kshell93.atnt. That is the version that I downloaded from cornshell.com. And the reason I put the AT&T extension on there is so that I know that is the uh, AT&T version and that if I download some other version of cornshell, it may in fact overwrite user bin kshell93. So this ensures that I always have a copy of kshell93.atnt and you can see that the permissions on that are 555 and uh, you can put root root as the user and group or whatever you want to uh, sign as the user and group to that. So this script that we're getting ready to run which is the autoload, the wiki autoload.shell script, it uses lots of the latest features of Cornshell 93 so uh, it is really imperative that you have one of the latest versions of Cornshell 93 to be able to run that script. Now one of the assumptions of this video is that you have user access to a MediaWiki server somewhere in your, in, on your desktop or on another server somewhere and that your user has permission to access the API interface. Now this video is not going to cover the administration aspects of setting up users with permissions to use the MediaWiki API interface. It will just assume you have permission already. This, this video is about this shell script, not uh, wiki administration. 
So if your wiki user does not have permission to use the API interface running on your wiki server, then you're not going to be able to run the script successfully. So you or your administrator will need to edit the local settings.php file and set some variables. And so let's look at that. If we look at, let's go to var www.html slash wiki and we'll do a tail on local settings.php and we can see at the end of that it requires these variables to be set. So you've got to enable the API to true. You've got to be able to write to the API. That's got to be true. And your group permissions to edit and read need to be true. So now let's run that script. Let's go back to the directory. And let's run that script. And that will show you all the um, options available to the user. And I will describe some of these features and options associated with the Wiki Autoload Shell Script. And this, again, is a shell script that automates the process of uploading content to a Wiki server. This capability enables the shell programmer or system administrator with an automated mechanism for documenting systems and processes and procedures and it makes that documentation easily accessible and or secure using the media wiki software. So this shell script can be run from any system in an organization to upload information from anywhere automatically to your centralized wiki documentation server. This means the wiki autoload script does not have to run on the same server as the wiki script can run on any system in the network that can access, that has network access to the wiki server. So you can run this shell script from anywhere to push documentation to your wiki server. So just to go over some of the features provided by the wiki autoload shell script, it has a, a dynamic ability to upload content to any media wiki server from anywhere in the world. It can dynamically name wiki pages based on the file names containing the upload content. Uh, multiple wiki categories can be assigned to pages as the content is uploaded. Uh, any, any wiki user can utilize the script to upload content and does not have to be an administrator. Uh, bulk uploading of content is, is provided from any text-based file. Wiki page titles autom are automatically generated from file names during the bulk uploads. And wiki page titles can be specified by the user for single file uploads. So another um, assumption and dependency of this, this wiki autoload shell script is that it assumes that the content you're about to upload to the wiki server is stored in files on the local system of the same system with the script. So each wiki page to be uploaded is being stored in a separate file. Uh, one of the dependencies of the script is that it requires the wget command to send files and receive cookies from the wiki server. Now then, let's take a closer look at the, uh, at the uh, information provided by the usage message here. Uh, you can see several sections of information. We have uh, the program name, Wiki Autoload. It gives you a short description here of what it does. It automatically uploads files as page content. It tells you how to use it. It gives you a usage message. And then it tells you what all those options mean. So here's a definition of all the options that you can use with the shell script. And then here's an example of using that shell script. Giving it a URL, we're giving it uh, who to log in as, and we're giving it a category and telling it what files to upload. So now let's run an example upload of a plain text file to a wiki server, and then we'll view the file, uh, we'll view what it uploaded to the wiki. So, first of all, let's see what directory we're in. And then let's just do an ls on that directory. And we see that there is a file out there called example.txt. 
So let's take a look at that first. Let's do a cat on example.txt so we can see what that looks like. Let me clear that page. So that's what's in the file. So you can see several lines of simple text are in this file. We've got a, a title line, we've got some text here that's a description, and then we've got a a list, of, a bulleted list of items. And so we can see that those are bulleted because they have the asterisk here in front of those lines. So now that we, we see what that text file, the example.txt file looks like, let's go over to the wiki server and show that that does not currently exist, that a page over there does not currently exist called um, example. So we're going to go to a wiki server that is on my local host. And this is just a, a base wiki server. And we're going to search for example. And it says that it did not find any results that match that. So it's asking me, do I want to create the page example? So instead of creating it there, let's go back to our command line shell script. And we will create it using our shell script. So first of all, let's look at our options again. And we see all those options. And so what we're going to do, I'll clear this page and we're going to um, send that that example.txt file to the wiki server using this shell script and communicating with the wiki API. So we're going to do a wiki autoload and we're going to give it minus V for verbose. We'll do a minus A and tell it where the wiki server is and that is at 127.0.0.1. It's on my local host, wiki api.php. So of course you're going to put your uh, network information at, uh, in order to get to your wiki in this, play, in this location uh, for this option. And we'll tell it what user to use. Now in this example, I'm going to use the uh, administrator, but you don't have to use the administrator. So I'm supplying the username and password that I want to use to log into that uh, wiki server. And I'm giving it a title for the page that I want it to use and then a category. And then I'm telling it what files to upload. Now in this case, I'm saying star.txt, but there's only one txt file here, so it's only going to upload the one file. So now that I've specified all of the parameters, <coughs> I'll run that script and we see that it uh, ran and uploaded that page. So now let's go back over to the browser window and search for that page again. Now remember before we didn't find that page. Let's search again. Well now the page exists. And remember the content of the page? It had the title and a description and that bulleted list go back over and look at the contents of that page again in the text file. All right, so there's the contents of the text file. Now let's go back and look at our browser, how, to upload, how it uploaded it to the browser, and we see that that looks very similar to our text file. It has the bulleted list, the title, and all of the information that was in the text file. So it, uh, it uploaded that example.txt file to the, to the wiki server.
So now let's upload that same file again and overwrite the contents in the wiki. And we'll change the wiki autoload shell script options that we used to upload the contents as pre-formatted text this time. So let's look at our wiki options and we see that there is a minus F option here that allows us to insert pre-formatted tags around the file contents. That means it's, it's going to upload the text as pre-formatted text so that the wiki makes no changes to the text that is being uploaded. So let's clear the page and let's recall our wiki command and we will simply add the minus F option to that same command string and run our command again. And so the command ran again. And so let's go look at our um, browser window. Okay, so take a look at what the file looks like now. And let's just reload that page and see what it looked like as it uploaded it as pre formatted text. So there's the text. So let's refresh the page and see how it changes. And so there it changed. You see it, it now looks exactly the same as it did in the text file. So let's go look at the text file. And so we, there's the text file and there's the wiki page. So it looks exactly the same as it did in the wiki page. So now let's go back to our browser and let's look at the history of the example wiki page now. And so we'll view the history link and we'll see that uh, there are multiple versions in the wiki page now. The original version that we uploaded and then the second version where we did the pre-formatted text. And we can verify that by clicking on the compare selected versions button. And we can see that in the version we, we uploaded with the pre-formatted flag, it now has pre-format tags in the, uh, in the wiki. So you can see that that script is a very useful thing to use. And uh, you've seen how you can use that script and you've seen where you can download it. And let's go back to the download page. Go to mountzia.com and go to download and scripts and corn and then if you scroll down on that page you'll see a link called wiki and scroll down in that page and you'll see the wiki autoload script. And you can click on that and download that script and run that to upload wiki content from any system in your network to any wiki server that you can get to over your network. So that is it on this video. Thank you for listening and watching.